Thank you, Brian, for being here. I have a quick question on um, some of the practical matters that you've talked about. Are you taking any steps to help people afford food, despite the figure that you mentioned that month to month the prices have gone down? My colleagues are reporting about how people are finding shortages on the shelves, how the stuff that is there is more expensive. Is there anything you can do to help families pay for that food? Well, I would say um, I, I, a number of things. One is um, when the president came into office, he prioritized early passing the American Rescue Plan. Uh, the American Rescue Plan has historic investments in actually um, addressing food insecurity uh, for people who couldn't um, uh, afford um, uh, food. As a result, we saw hunger uh, in the United States decline uh, in, uh, in, in 2021. Um, it also included a, the, uh, the child tax credit, uh, another resource that went directly, that are going uh, directly to families um, to help address the you know, typical costs that they face on a monthly basis. Um, and as a result, we saw um, child poverty fall by 35 to 40 percent uh, in America over the course of 2021. Um, and uh, uh, and uh, we saw, as I mentioned, we saw some welcome deceleration and increase uh, in, the, in the cost of uh, food uh, this month. Uh, and we're going to keep focused on those uh, uh, ways that we can address the typical pocketbook issues that the American people face. Uh, and this is one of the issues uh, why the core economic logic behind the president's, uh, behind the Build Back Better plan is important in this context. Because for uh, working Americans who are, benef uh, who are benefiting from a strong labor market and more job opportunities, but also um, struggling with uh, costs not only of food, but costs of uh, child care or the costs of health care, um, the components of the Build Back Better plan would directly address those issues by, putting, uh, by providing a tax cut uh, to, uh, to families directly uh, in their pocketbook, and then reducing other of their most salient costs. So for a lot of the families that you're talking about, if they you know, only had to pay 7% of their income in child care, that would free up um, a lot of resources to invest in, uh, in other uh, monthly needs. So and short of that passing, and separate from what you have already done, the measures you mentioned, is there anything new you can do to help the food situation? Well, I would say first, what we have done is historic and has made a big uh, difference. Number two, our, our, our central economic legislative priority is getting uh, those elements of Build Back Better in place. And, and part of the urgency of that is to address precisely uh, the challenges that you are identifying. Uh, so, um, and beyond that, uh, we are looking at ways that we can unstick elements of the supply chain that may be getting in the way of, for example, physical product uh, getting uh, to market. Um, and certainly, we have seen, uh, we have seen over the course of this fall, we've seen concerns about um, uh, product shortages in particular categories and otherwise. Um, what we've seen overall, if you look at retail inventories, including grocery store inventories, they're actually um, higher now than they were uh, pre-pandemic, so in a pretty healthy place. Um, but that doesn't mean that there's logistical challenges at the at bottlenecks that um, that may be localized, um, and to the degree that we can work with private sector companies um, and help, you know, um, ease the challenges in their private sector supply chain, certainly we will uh, will remain open to doing that. I do have one question on the global challenge, since you mentioned it. The president mentioned it today. Can you talk about how much you believe China's latest round of lockdowns and its zero? Um, case doctrine is having an impact on inflation since obviously it's impacting the global manufacturing. And has the administration had any conversations with China about the factory workers, about the lockdowns? Yeah. So there's no question that um, the global nature of the uh, pandemic uh, affects global supply chains uh, and has affect, uh, affected the flow of goods um, uh, across, across economies. Uh, one of the things that we did earlier this fall was actually set up what we call an early warning system, working with a number of our American companies uh, uh, that rely on sourcing input components or products from uh, uh, Southeast Asian countries um, to identify where there might be uh, COVID outbreaks uh, in those countries. 
uh, and work with the State Department and USAID and the CDC on the ground in those countries to do what we can to actually help to stabilize the situation and reduce the uh, potential impact of a shutdown or a lockdown or otherwise. With respect to China specifically um, uh, and, the, and, the, and the current uh, moment, we're monitoring it very closely um, as we assess uh, the issue today. Um, the lockdowns are most likely to have the isol uh, effect isolated in China because the, the production facilities in those er geographies are principally suppliers to the Chinese market. Um, but the situation is fluid and ongoing and something that we're monitoring in real time and working uh, across the interagency, uh, including the State Department and the CDC, to try to keep a handle on. Thank you.